Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. Well, hello there and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. Today is Wednesday, the 13th of April 2022, and a very, very happy Sankran to all my subscribers and listeners. Sawadee P. Mai to everyone. Hopefully, if you're here in Thailand, you're going to have a lovely day. You'll enjoy the festivities wherever you may be, and you'll have a safe Sankran. If you're not here in Thailand, let's hope you have a great and equally great day, no matter where you are. So let's jump into the first story of the day. Tanatorn arraigned in court for less majeste. The criminal court has accepted for trial a case filed by the prosecution against Tanakorn Jongrun Krunkit, chairman of the progressive movement, charging him with committing less majeste during the Facebook Live on January 18th, 2021, criticizing the government's COVID-19 vaccine procurement plan. The lawyer of Mr. Tanacorn said prosecutors on Monday decided to indict Mr. Tanatorn in the criminal court for breach of Section 112, the Les Majeste Law, of the Criminal Code and of the Computer Crimes Act, as recommended by Nang Loeng police investigators. The criminal court accepted the case for trial, Mr. Chris Dang said. Speaking outside the court, Mr. Tanatorn said he believed the case was politically motivated and vowed to contest the charges. It is clear that I am one of the key opposition figures and I think the objective is to silence me, to make the public afraid. So if we can keep silent, keep our mouths shut, they win, he said. The progressive movement later issued a statement to media saying Mr. Tanatorn had been indicted for referring to His Majesty the King while talking about the government's procurement of vaccines against COVID-19 from Siam Bioscience Company, a Thai biopharmaceuticals manufacturer. According to the indictment, Mr. Tanatorn remark published on the internet was intended to cause the public to look at the king with suspicion. After being indicted, Mr. Tanatorn filed an application with the court for release on bail. He was released on a 90,000 baht bail. Sion Bioscience is owned by His Majesty the King. So I think if there's ever a case where you could say it's politically motivated, it would be this one. In most countries, it would be your civic duty to question the procurement of vaccines in a country, where the money is going to, and to question what the government is exactly doing and why they were relying solely on one supplier at the beginning. In Thailand, they try to bang you up for 20 years for doing that. So we are certainly not living in a democracy here in the country where there is freedom to say what you want and question the government about how it spends tax payers money that's just simply not allowed according to this government but hopefully common sense will prevail and that these charges will eventually after going to trial be dismissed because i think they are erroneous at best and moving along air passengers number soar airports of thailand public company limited expects about 1 million passengers both domestic and international to pass through its six airports during the songkran holidays AOT president Nitnai Siris Matatkarn said the number of air travellers have gone up since the government eased COVID-19 restrictions and dropped pre-arrival RT-PCR testing on April 1. From April 1 to 7, a total of 894,756 air travellers passed through Suanapum Airport, Don Muang, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Phuket and Hatiai. The daily average of 127,000 passengers was a jump from the figure of 107,000 recorded last month. The overall tally was made up of 202,000 international passengers, up 39% from last month, and 692,476 domestic travellers, up 14%. In terms of air traffic, the airport logged 8,245 flights in the first seven days in April, or 1,178 flights a day on average, with international flights up 5%, while domestic flights are up 15%. The AOT expects even busier flight and passenger traffic during the Songkran holidays this week, with 9,310 flights expected to be handled by the airports, up 14% from last year's Songkran period. Of them, 6,820 will be domestic flights, down 2% year-on-year and 2,490 scheduled as international flights, up 123% from the same time last year. 
According to the AOT, about 1 million passengers will use the six airports during the Songkran Festival, a surge of 103%. Mr. Nitnai said AOT had introduced the common use passenger processing system for all airports. This step is intended to speed up passenger transit and also keep the airports clear and health safe. Common use self check ins as well as the common use bag drop points are designated to help cut queues at pre flight check in desks. And next up, Swanapum adds more hotel counters amid reports of chaos. Swanapum Airport has added more hotel counters for inbound passengers after reports of chaos in the passenger arrival area. Airport General Manager Kittipong Kitakachorn said nine more counters for hotels have been added on the second floor, reserved for incoming air travellers, taking the total to 17. The move followed complaints by airport users on social media on the weekend. Pictures showed frustrated passengers looking for the names of the hotels where they wanted to stay or had made reservations before travelling. Hotel staff shouted the names of their hotels and desperately shook their heads. When passengers complained to them, hotel staff told them to complain to the airports of Thailand, a post on the Twitter account of Spin9 said. Airports of Thailand manages Swanapum and other international airports in the country except Samui. Arrivals at Swanapum Airport have risen since the lifting of pre-travel RT-PCR testing on April 1. AOT predicts even more passengers passing through Suanapum and other airports during Songkran. Now, more travellers entering the kingdom this month as the government removed the mandatory pre-arrival RTP test certificate under the test and go scheme. And that was inevitable that was going to happen. On Sunday, Achikan Chernakavona, the owner of the YouTube channel Spin9, with over 631,000 subscribers, shared a post shedding light on how chaotic the airport was while travellers were struggling to find their vans to their hotel to take their post-arrival RT-PCR test. No one was able to go anywhere. They were put together in long queues, Achikan wrote. Hotel staff screamed their hotel names until their voices cracked. Achikan said there was no directory guiding passengers except for a pack of hotel logos on one counter. Everything was placed randomly and unalphabetically. Once the passengers found their hotel counter, they had to join a long queue since there was only one staff handling bookings for many hotels, he added. His post has gone viral with over 37,000 retweets and 6,600 shares across Facebook. The embarrassment on the faces of those officials prompted them to release a statement to rescue their integrity a day later. Such traffic occurred during the peak hours, said the Airports of Thailand, the state-run operator of Airports of Thailand. According to the statement, Suanapum Airport had to handle an uptick in passenger numbers from 6 to 7,000 to 9 to 10,000 a day amid COVID-19 precautions. The officials also said they had increased the number of counters and arranged some alphabetically to make it easier for passengers to spot their hotel logo. No doubt the airport officials were quick to respond to those complaints. Sadly, this was nothing more than the outcome of a slap in the face from one of the prominent influencers who was able to create online outrage overnight. It proves the unflattering fact that those authorities are only willing to take action properly to facilitate their citizens and guests when the problem causes them embarrassment to some extent. Given how the government is treating foreign visitors who contributed substantially to the country's economy prior to the pandemic, Thailand's tourism prosperity may not be on the horizon anytime soon. And moving along to some new developments here on Phuket, Bangla Road to remove COVID checkpoints. The checkpoints at each end of Bangla Road in Patong will be removed and no longer check people entering the popular nightlife street for their temperature or vaccination status. The news was announced by Wirawit Krusombat, chairman of the Phuket Entertainment Business Association, in a letter sent to nightlife venue operators. The letter was shared by Patong businessman Prab Kisen last night. The letter was addressed to business owners, Patong Municipality and members of the PEBA, as well as provincial government agencies and community associations in the area. The PEBA launched the checkpoints on April 2nd, Mr. Weirwit noted. They will no longer be in operation from April 12th, he said. Mr. Weirwit thanked all people and agencies involved in supporting the initiative. I would like to thank all sectors for working together with great respect, he said. Now, it's quite interesting that they would choose to remove these 
the day before Songkran starts. It seems this is completely from a financial point of view. Now remember, this was not set up by the government, but set up by the local operators in Patong to help reopen and persuade the government to let them reopen the entertainment area by having strict regulations and people going in and out and then randomly doing ATK testing to ensure that people felt safe and, you know, protected somewhat from the virus. Now, there are many people who will still say that those restrictions, the checkpoint at Bangla Road is still needed, that we still need to be checking people have been fully vaccinated, that we still need to be checking people's temperature, that we still need to be doing random ATK testing. I kind of fall into the middle on all of this. I I don't believe that it's all fully necessary. In fact, I think that the biggest thing that can be done on Bangla Road is to have regular ATK testing of the staff working in the bars and clubs and restaurants that are there. The customer at the end of the day is the customer and they're coming in to spend their money there. Taking a person's temperature, as we all know now after two years, is absolutely pointless. It's purely there for show. Showing vaccine certificates again also can be forged many probably are from some of the countries that we've seen coming into thailand where you'd wonder if these people have ever been vaccinated so we do know that happens as well if they check the covert certificates like they check when you're coming into phuket at the phuket checkpoint on the land border then it's probably pointless to have any kind of checkpoint there because they barely look at them coming in there so it's probably quite similar on bangla road as well also at the end of the day the Phuket entertainment businesses are paying for this at either end so they have to employ somebody to do it and I suppose they're looking at it from the point of view that it is probably time to get on with things if you see videos or even go down to Bangla Road you see most people aren't even wearing masks around Patong and in this you know Bangla Road area it's pretty free and open the numbers for COVID in Phuket are dropping continuously I think we're down to 150 cases a day so yeah the numbers are dropping there doesn't seem to be a need to have this anymore of course there are people who say yes we still need it there is the argument that now is not the time especially the day before Songkran to be getting rid of these kind of restrictions especially when the government have spoken about the need to have low numbers in order to get rid of the arrival PCR and to get rid of the Thailand Pass so there is people who will say that well it looks like these entertainment venues are taking the short-term cash rather than looking to the future and thinking about you know a couple of months from now when restriction could be totally gone and even more business could be coming to them but they're looking at it now saying well we just need the cash now we need to get rid of these restrictions straight away on Bangla Road so I don't know it kind of falls into two camps there you kind of a for or against it but I'd love to know guys what you think about all of this and as always your comments are very very welcome down below in the comment section now speaking about Songkran the seven dangerous days begins with a spike in road deaths The first day of Songkran's notorious seven dangerous days saw 237 road accidents and 328 drunk drivers arrested, the authorities said on Tuesday. Traffic collisions are expected to spike from April 11 to 17th as people travel back to their hometowns for the Songkran holiday. Songkran has gained notoriety for road accidents as so many people are under the influence of alcohol or illegal drugs and many choose to speed. On Monday, 26 people were killed, 238 were injured from 237 road accidents, Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation announced. Province with the highest number of accidents on the first day was Nakansi Tamara with 12 accidents. The province with the highest number of deaths was Supanburi with 3 deaths. Most of the accidents were caused by speeding at 32.91%, while 21.5% were caused by drunk driving. Driving motorcycles during this period is particularly dangerous as 83.9% of the accidents involved motorbikes. Most of the deaths were motorcyclists who were not wearing their helmets, said Buntam Letsukakim, the Director General of the DDPM. Last year, 277 people were killed during this week and 2,357 were injured from more than 2,300 traffic accidents during the Songkran holiday. The number of accidents went down 30% from the same period in 2019 due to the reduction in travelling from the COVID-19 outbreak. Thai authorities have banned Songkran festivals with large gatherings for the last two years due to the pandemic. The Office of the Chief Justice Region 6 said in a statement over the weekend that they expect more traffic collisions in its region this year when compared to last year, especially from drunk driving as there are less COVID restriction measures. 
Apart from the accidents, 459 drivers were arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol or illegal drugs. Reckless drivers were also arrested at checkpoints around the country on Monday, said the Department of Probation. Out of the 459 arrests, 328 were drunk drivers, 123 under the influence of drugs, and 8 cases were reckless driving. The top 3 provinces where drunk drivers were found included Nantaburi with 55 cases, followed by 47 in Uban Arachatani and 44 in Nakan Si Ayutia. Analysts expect this year to be even worse than last as COVID restriction measures continue to ease. And finally, the Phuket News Daily Report. Official Songkran celebrations begin in Phuket Town. The first of the official festivities being held for the Songkran holidays began at the Chartered Bank intersection in the old Phuket Town area on April 11th, with Miss Thailand 2022 Phuket native Manita Duang Kam Farmer as a special guest. Russian tourists interested in travel to Thailand surges 20% amid open skies for friendlies announcement. Moscow's announcement of Russia lifting COVID-19 restrictions on flights to 52 more countries from yesterday spurred immediate growth in search inquiries for tickets from Russia to foreign states, with searches for Thailand jumping by 20%, but actual flights are yet to resume. Aussies in Phuket called to submit postal votes for May 21 election. The Australian Consulate General for Phuket and neighbouring provinces is calling for all Australians in Phuket and nearby to register to cast their postal votes for the upcoming general election in Australia on May 21st. And finally, Patong Home gutted in house fire. Firefighters have confirmed that there were no deaths or injuries in a fire that gutted a home in Pra Barami Road in Patong last night. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.